y'all welcome back to my channel on behalf of Britt. if you're new here welcome i'm Brittany, and today's video is a girl talk my girl talks are a little different here the only tea i'm really spilling are just tips and tricks to help new braiders or braiders that's been in the game but like to benefit from watching videos and hearing other braiders perspectives so today's girl talk is a really special topic subscribers reach out to me on social media and ask me a bunch of questions but i feel like this, this topic was very important it was a very good question so today's topic will be professional attire when you're working from home how can you dress professional and be comfortable when you're working from home what does it look like to go to another area of your house but you're still a beauty service provider and want to look or feel professional so i want to talk to you guys about comfy clothing where you can still look professional ways that you can dress to gain the respect of your clients as home braiders, it's already tough for us. It's a little bit tougher to gain respect. I don't feel like we gain respect as easily or as quick as people working out of a salon suite or a salon would. And I really don't want to use the word respect. I feel like there's a better word I could use to describe what I'm trying to say. But right now, for lack of a better term, as a home braider, your clients are going to try certain things that they would never try in a salon. Certain things I dealt with early on as being a home braider that I would notice versus when I was someone going into, going into a salon before I learned how to do hair. Some things I would notice people would never do in a salon but would try with me was showing up super late. Um, I'm talking 30 minutes to an hour late and bringing extra guests, bringing their kids without discussing it with you, bringing a boyfriend, a spouse, bringing a home girl to sit with you. You would never do that in a salon. You would never bring two or three of your children to sit with you at a salon. You know it's not tolerated. But as a home braider, a home stylist in a more relaxed environment, working out of your bedroom, your living room, a guest room, um, somewhere where you're not in the public eye, where you're around other stylists or around other women that are being serviced by other stylists in a public environment where other women can kind of cut their eyes at you, where you're not really being judged because you're not in a public setting. A lot of people will pull certain things. I'm pulling up to your house and it's just you. Or if you're a young braider and you're still at home or you're in college and you have roommates, whatever the case may be, wherever your setting is, people will pull certain things you're easily gonna get clients in. A person can look at a profile and see a home braider's work and it's no different from someone working in a salon. But once we get those clients in as regularly and frequently as the people in the salon, we have to self-reflect and come up with ways to really gain that respect, to take things a step further, really just try to decide what it is that we can do already being at home to still give them that professional environment to show them, hey, I'm at home, this is where I rather do hair, but I still need you to respect me the same way I'm respecting you. I'm giving you grade A service the way you would get it anywhere else. So I need you to respect my home, respect my time and respect me. Once I get comfortable with the person, yeah, I start letting my guard down. I may do hair in a t-shirt. I may get up in a tank top with no bra. I may get up and not comb my hair and put a bonnet on, just wash my face, brush my teeth, throw on whatever is closest to me and go out into my living room. But as a new braider or not even a new braider, me being an experienced braider, anytime I'm meeting a new person, the way the experience I give them I always make sure that my client can have the best first impression possible the effort I put in to get up and make sure that everything is just on point. It's important that you do that if you want to build a solid clientele or you want to be respected. The first thing that you want to invest in that I've mentioned in a lot of my videos is an apron. Honestly, it don't matter what you put on. If you had this apron on top, that automatically elevates your look to a more professional look instantly. You can have on a graphic tee, a tank top like what I have on, a sundress, whatever it is. All of the things that I name it automatically is gonna take your look up to the next level. Over the years, I've purchased a few um, aprons. I've been gifted a couple of aprons. So I have a whole collection, but I decided to pull out my newest one. I feel like this one is the most elevated one. I'll link this down below. Um, my dad purchased this off of Amazon, but it has like some rhinestone beading down the zipper. It ties on the side so you can throw it on any outfit and just tie it on the side. It has pockets. It's one size fit all, so you can tie the knights tight if you're a smaller girl. Um, tie the knights not so looser if you're um, more on the plus size. And this apron automatically elevates your look. So first up, before I even show you any of the comfortable clothing that you're going to be wearing when greeting new clients, get you an apron. 
So the first thing that I want to suggest to you all is active wear or matching sets. And I really want to want to stress active wear and not lounge wear. Active wear and lounge wear are two totally different things. Lounge wear is still something you're going to wear when you're in your downtime. Active wear, um, the first outfit that I'll show you guys is one of my most recent purchases. I'll link it down below if it's still on Shein. But it's this turquoise like waffled outfit. And it's active wear that's meant for the gym, but active wear means that you're up, you're being active, whether you're running errands, it don't have to necessarily be a workout outfit. So it's going to be under like that active wear workout gear. If you're shopping on a lot of these sites, it's going to be where all of their active clothing is. If you're going into Ross, Marshalls, TJ Maxx is going to be over there where the Reebok, the Nike, the Champion, the active um, gym wear is, but active wear is just you're getting up and you're being active. As a beauty service provider going out into our living room, going into a salon, going to house call, you're still up and being active and moving your body, moving around, standing on your feet, up and down, moving around your client's head. It's important to have good, comfortable, breathable, stretchy clothing to get through the day. So this first outfit is one of my go-tos, active wear with long sleeves, leggings, and long sleeves. I'm going to show you like a short sleeve set with like biker shorts or whatever for warmer days but i normally will wear this to house calls or on a hot summer day when we got the ac going i don't like to be cold y'all so normally i'm gonna have on long sleeves um but on days like this i just feel like it's so much better than just throwing on some dingy leggings and a hoodie um when i first started out and i was going to house calls and i knew my, the client's house that i was going to they keep their house cold i would throw a hoodie on and some leggings just to know that i'm warm and go to their house and i want it to be comfortable and i know my clients aren't judging what i have on it just looks better to have a full set a matching set something cohesive just to show that you really put effort into how you look that day so no matter if you're just going to see your living room or not having a matching set with a jacket and the tights to match something breathable stretchy a nice um attractive color it'll really show your client that you put in effort and you actually were looking forward to meeting them that day and put on something more attractive greeting them in a hoodie versus greeting them in like a cute matching set two totally different appearances when you're making that first impression so i would say invest in active wear this one is still the same idea it's just short so it comes with biker shorts which complements the shape really well this is one of those that has the ruching and the butt crack area that really hugs your butt i don't know if that's focusing or not um but i'll put it on y'all will see it on the screen and then it comes with the matching set the matching top i meant to say with the ruching down the middle um very breathable very comfortable when you first put it on sets like this are one size fit all so it may feel a little tight but the more you wear it the more you move around in it it will form to your body type to your comfortability and i love wearing these this look would still be just as appropriate if it was black with a white t-shirt it doesn't have to match but i'm just saying it does improve your appearance a whole lot when the set matches Go off what you like, but a matching set, y'all, is definitely going to seal the deal with your apron. Listen, it's a clean look. It's clean. My second suggestion for comfy clothing when you want to be professional with working from home is a dress. Um, some type of sundress, like a maxi dress. I love dresses. For one, you don't have to worry about piecing the outfits together. Those matching sets that I showed y'all was also hard to dig up because once I do laundry, shorts and pants go one place, jackets go another place. But if I have a dress on hand just to throw on, once you put that dress on, it's your whole outfit right there. Throw on your apron, apron, keep it moving. I have this one, which is one of my go-tos, which is this dress right here. It's a rib dress. It has a spaghetti strap on it. It's form-fitting, though, but it's very stretchy and it's very thick. It's not see-through. Like It's a nice, breathable, thick material, but it's very comfortable, very cozy, just like the active, active wear. Um, to me, they're very attractive. They're very inviting, very welcoming. I cared about what I put on today. And let's do this, you know? So I love wearing dresses. When I put on a dress, I automatically feel like I'm about to get up for that day and just give some elite services. Another alternative to a dress would be a jumpsuit or a jumper which is basically a rumper with legs i wouldn't suggest wearing a rumper because sometimes they crawl up our butts you don't want to greet a new client with your butt cheeks hanging out jeans i would never suggest y'all wear jeans while doing hair on um, that button that buckle just sitting on your belly as you're up and down a nice rumper or a maxi dress or a sundress 
great clothing last but not least my final suggestion for you all for comfortable clothing when working from home would be a t-shirt and leggings but there's ways that you can elevate that too invest in basics a solid white a solid black a solid gray t-shirt camisole um this one is a bit extra but just a regular basic tank top. Y'all know what basics are. It says braids by Brittany. It has a little crown and some scissors. Etsy will take any solid t-shirt and they have it where you can put in your custom text, type it up $25 to $30 um, that you can put into rotation and just pair with leggings. And it may seem a little extra to get up every day and have your name on your shirt when you're not working in a salon, you're working at home. But still, that's little things that you can do to show your clients that you care about your work. You care about the experience that you're giving them and you take pride in your business. I don't feel like we should feel any less than. I don't feel like we should lowball ourselves or feel like we have to be bummy or we don't have to put in the effort just because we're at home. No, still get up, still take pride in how you look and, and promote and really just stand tall about your business. Clients that come to me on days that I have my t-shirts on, my Braids by Britney t-shirts on, whether they tag me or remember to promote me or not, my um the moment they post a TikTok or a reel in their story and I'm behind them braiding their hair and they see my stuff on their shirt, easily someone can say, I liked her hair, I like that TikTok and go and type in Braids by Britney and find my social media some way, somehow. That right there can sell yourself when people don't take the time to shout you out or may have forgotten to tag you or mention you in a story or something like that. Um, I would say take the 20 to $30 to invest in getting your name put on a shirt. It doesn't cost a whole lot of money. So set yourself apart and lock in your first time clients. So that is really it for today's video. That's all I wanted to share with you guys. Again, this particular subscriber hit me up and asked me a bunch of questions. And this one question just stood out to me. A lot of the breakdown and some of the things I wanted to say in this video might have been too long to just put in a Q&A where this, qu this one question would have took up a good percentage of the video. So yeah, I'm not sure how long this video is and if it'll be as long as some of my other girl talks, but I just had a few suggestions on some things that you can wear or what I wear personally when I'm meeting a new client. I felt like that was a really, really good question. So thank you to my subscriber that reached out to me. I don't know if you wanted me to expose your name or not, but thank you for reaching out to me and asking me that. I think that a lot of people can benefit from this video. So yeah, make sure y'all are leaving questions down below. That Q&A will be coming up within the next week or two where I'll be answering a bunch of questions that you all have. I love you all and I will see you in the next video.